Hello everyone and welcome for another video of Love and War Games. In this video, we are going to take a look at what has just been announced for the releases in Dystopian Wars and a little bit more for January 2024. And it's very interesting because as you can see here from the little spoiler, there are five different boxes that have been announced. And uh, we were expecting a lot, but this is even more than most of us were expecting. There are four like ship boxes and one terrain uh, that is called a dystopian industrial set. We'll talk a bit about it because it is going to be compatible not only with most like sci-fi uh, 6mm, 8mm uh, war games and 15mm of course, but also, and this is what interests us, with Armored Clash. We have a lot to cover, so let's start right away with the Ganges Battlefleet set. And this one is going to be interesting because this is the first time we have the Indian nation for the crown in Dystopian Wars. So I know there some of you will say like, yeah, but we had Indians in the previous Dystopian Wars. Yes, but that was before War Cradle bought back the license. So this is the first time we have an interpretation on those ships and what they do. And uh, yeah, they do look really, really good. Um, the, it's not technically, as they say, the um, East Indian Trade Company, which you can play by having the um, Indiaman uh, flagship, the Mass 4 for the Crown, and then just some normal uh, Crown ship. These are really like Indians from the house of Sindhya, of the Gwalior princely state. So those are real Indian ships, as you can see from the, the name. And yeah, they do look very good. We'll take a look at each of them. But especially they come with some landing tokens. And that is quite cool because those are very nice. We had only seen them so far. <laughs> we had only seen them so far uh, for the um, Fortunes and Glory set. So having them in a separate uh, set is very interesting. I hope we will have very soon the scenarios to allow for beach landing. So this is a smaller box. We have the flagship uh, looking good. I like this little nacelle on the side, kind of like reminiscent of the Sultanate. And since India and the Sultanate are quite close, it's logical that they would influence each other um, like aesthetically wise. The very interesting thing is they have those small torpedo turrets on the side. And uh, I'm really looking forward to see how they will look. Will it just be like another design and they will still just have the torpedo turrets like the normal uh, crown ships, or will it be another thing? I uh, will have to see, maybe it's uh, gonna be closer to what the Alliance has on the French, for example. And let's have a more details, of course, very interesting as well. Uh, well, I love escorts and there is four escorts, I love that. And the very interesting uh, shield uh, generator that you can see on those platforms. We had a teaser on these platforms recently and now we know they are. that's exactly what they are. So first we start with the Ganges Battle Cruiser. As you can see, well, painted by that, it always looks amazing. And it looks uh, interesting uh, because it has only two heavy gun batteries and two small gun batteries. So it looks a little bit undergunned, but let's remember it's a battle cruiser. So if they keep the logic, it will be a little bit cheaper than a battleship, for example. So that is quite interesting. I also like that it has those uh, weird uh, torpedo turrets to the front. It has, of course, one guardian, two guardians. Uh, half of what the Britannia has, except if I see another one somewhere. And yeah, the thing that I'm not a huge fan with is that it has frontal torpedo turrets and maybe it's going to be very efficient. We'll need to see the profile, it's not there yet. Um, but it, with all its gun batteries, it really wants to show its side to be able to combine everything and make use of heavy firepower, which it probably will have. So it means that you will have one torpedo turret that you will not be, uh, be able to use. And that makes me a little bit sad when I cannot maximize firepower, but it's okay. We really will depend on the price and uh, to, we'll need to see if it is a landing vessel or not. Then we have the norm, like um, another variant, which is the Palashi uh, Indiaman. And this is much more like the Indiaman of the crown in the sense that it is a repair vessel in the rear. So it loses one heavy gun battery to probably get um, repair facility three. Let's uh, make a guess. And uh, this will make it a much easier ship to pilot because then, okay, you're fine uh, having all your firepower to the front and staying a little bit in the back to be an anchor for the rest of your ship. Again, we'll need to see the points and which exact rules it will have, 
but uh, having a repair facility is very good. I'm also hoping it will allow to repair the aerial ships uh, because uh, that's something the uh, Crown has been needing for a while, uh, but we'll see how it happens. Then we switch to the Mass uh, 2 uh, cruisers and we start with the Nagaraja, which uh, is quite a beefy ship. It has one heavy gun battery to the front, all the torpedoes to the front as well, and to the rear it has one small gun battery. Looks interesting, I'm a bit sad of the rear gun battery as always because it's going to be hard to maximize. But yeah, when you see this uh, front part of the ship, if you cut here vertically from uh, where there is the citadel, uh, it's like, damn, that's a lot of firepower to the front. I quite like the aesthetics of these uh, Indians. Like, it's very reminiscent of even the Italians in this sense, having this program like this. Maybe, I'm thinking now, they will have a program uh, as well, which will uh, make them quite fast. If they play the same as uh, the Sultanate, being able to skim a little bit left and right, and then to go full ahead, um, like full speed ahead, uh, with a program that could be a very fun way to play the game. I'm really excited to see what they will say, but yeah, skimming on the side, uh, drifting on this on the side, and then going full steam ahead. If they do this, damn, it's gonna be fun. So yeah, good forward-facing uh, weaponry seems like a good ship. Again, we'll need to see the price. Uh, the Devaki, well, this seems <laughs> the the cheapest, bulkiest ship you can get. Probably it's gonna be quite cheap, but I, this is probably my favorite ship. It looks very dwarven. Uh, to me, like with uh, this huge cannon to the front and this program and being very bulky. Uh, again, we'll need to see what their rules will be, but this is probably something you can uh, build like a few of those very easily without regretting. We'll of course make a what to build video once we receive the box and unbox and everything. But uh, I'm excited to see what it will look like, how it will play, and uh, yeah, like I, I think it's going to be quite cheap and very efficient because it has nothing except broadside and one heavy gun battery. But if it can uh, ram at the same time, damn, that's going to be a fun gameplay. We then go to the Indus, which is uh, interesting as well. It doesn't have the torpedoes to the front, so it's really like a side firing ship. And I like this maybe even more than the Nagaraja because uh, torpedoes are fine, but uh, I don't like when you have to have these different angles to be really optimal. This guy, the Indus, knows what it wants to do. It wants to go kind of like in the center, show its side, and make a devastating volley. You can see this guy as the uh, bigger brother, angrier brother of the Excalibur in the time, in the terms of uh, gameplay. It looks like it's going to be quite fast. It is a broadside monster with all the uh, gun batteries that it's going to get. It doesn't have. Uh, torpedoes, that's true, that is true, but depends on, depending on the price and how tough it is, it might be a very good alternative. And then yet another variant, the Godavari, which is uh, the uh, version we like, probably one of my favorite version of the entire Indian roster, because it has torpedoes to the front, one heavy gun battery to the front, and that's it. No extra fancy stuff, so you can really stay in the back for a couple turns, use your torpedoes, Hoping it is torpedoes, otherwise they say really bad things for the whole while. But probably it's a long range weapon, those things. It's probably torpedoes, let's be honest. And uh, then you can uh, close with a squadron of those and link all their gun batteries together. If those are majestic turrets, then all bets are off because then this is really a backfield camper. Because you keep those majestic at extreme range, those torpedoes at extreme range, and this guy is a sniper. If it is, how it is. And if the enemy gets close, you can really start to get closer and ram them with your maneuverability. So the Godavari seems like a very, very interesting ship and probably the one that I will build for myself when I receive it. Then you have the Shanura, which is probably going to be much more expensive because it's basically a Godavari but with an extra repair facility in the rear. We'll have to see what exactly this little crane does. But yeah, it looks very, very interesting. Probably going to be their uh, toughest uh, and most expensive ship. Well, that's just a guess. Or it's going to be way up there in terms of price. Then, if, if it is indeed this, uh, you can really keep this in the back, repairing things left and right and shooting majestic and torpedoes. Wow, that is going to be a lot. And you will notice that there is no Mass 1 ships. You do have instead those platforms, and what are those platforms? Well, they're called platforms, okay, very well. Um, you probably get the forward deployment rule, as always. Uh, not sure if you will have it or not. We'll see. They have two gun batteries, smaller ones. It's okay. Uh, knowing that the crown can use them pretty efficiently. We'll see if we can squadron them, but whatever. The thing that makes me very interested is this. It looks like the generator that 
the Canadians have on their Halifax, and there is a variant of the Gloriana, the um, Camelot, that has it as well, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, absolutely not, I'm telling you bad things. It's not this, it's only the Canadian that have this on the Halifax. And this allows you to boost the Guardian generators of ships around it. And you know that I'm not a big fan of platforms in general, but having uh, this in your deployment zone or just outside of it, so that for the first couple turns you can really boost your pool of uh, Guardian uh, points, that could be really game changer for the uh, crown. Like this, depending on the points, of course, and how is it fragile or not, but you can hide this behind an island, uh, sort of, because two gun batteries is fine, but okay. Just hide it on the side, like barely out behind an island, and uh, then it will just boost your crown ships around very efficiently and making them so much tougher. So, need to see the rules again, but this looks like something very interesting to have. The escort tokens for the crown, uh, they are very Indian looking. Indeed, I'm a bit sad we don't get some official like crown British or Canadian uh, tokens, but it's okay. Uh, they look adorable, as all the escorts do, and I want 10 of them. And finally, you get some landing tokens, which are the same as we have seen. No, they're not exactly the same, I realize. The one we had for Fortunes and Glory, they were trip terrain sports, and those are tanks. Okay, and they look like British tanks from World War One. Okay, this makes me think something. Does it mean that the ones from Fortunes and Glory, they were generic mercenaries or generic like, uh, yeah, like American ones? Because they looked like American uh, transports from Wild West Exodus. Does it mean that each faction will have their own little units on each landing token? Because it doesn't say crown landing token. But maybe they will all be equals in terms of rules. But each faction will have its own design. That could be extremely interesting. Uh, we'll have to see other landing tokens. But for now, this looks like a crown landing token to me. I really hope each of them will be very unique. It will go good with Armoid Clash. That is it for this uh, new Indian force. We'll, of course, talk a lot more when we have the rules. But yeah, I really like the appearance. We'll need to see the rules. Uh, they look like a great mix between the Italians and the Sultanate, like the Turkish especially. And uh, yeah, really happy with this release. It's been a while the crown had something cool to play with. We continue with Beyond Fortune and Glory. So it's part of the Beyond sets, which is an expansion over the two-player starter sets. And this expand, indeed, uh, the fortune and glory uh, that saw the Union facing the Sultanate and more like the Honorable Eclipse Company facing the Crimson League. I don't know what to think of those. Uh, maybe I'm a little bit underwhelmed if I'm being honest. Uh, platforms are great as terrain as always, like they look really good. It allows you to, to really fill up, if, especially if you uh, click them next to each other to make like a kind of like a line. It can really help you to break line of sights. Consider they are like my six or whatever that you can see over them. It really makes the games funnier. Many times newer players are like, yeah, it's a fun game, but damn, uh, this dystopian war is very lethal. Everybody was dead by turn two. And I'm like, yeah, well, the range are quite big in this game and you need to hide to survive. If you don't have big enough islands, uh, you will die extremely fast and it will be a very lethal game. The game is funnier when you have this positioning movement game. Uh, yeah, that's much better then. The official terrains are small. You've seen the icebergs and the they are not that big, but they are, uh, these little platforms, the more you can have them, uh, if you pile them up, as you've seen we've, uh, we've been doing uh, in our battle reports, uh, they can really break line of sights easily. So if you don't intend to play them as units, and they're not great as units, I would recommend to get this box and use them as terrain, because that's very, very much how we use them and how we love them. Then what do you get? Uh, let's start with the Sultanate side. You get some Turkish surface units because in the box you have all the Turkish aerial units. So two cruisers and two Temirs. Temirs are fine, they can be attached as well. So that uh, that is something. These guys have acceptable attrition, which is always uh, nice. There are a few variants of the Iskander and all the variants of the Turkish ships that you can get. But basically the one thing that I might recommend is to combine them and there is two uh, variants that you can have a way you really link them and it makes kind of like a flagship, it's a mass three. And one of them has Fortunes of War, which is always, always very welcome. But basically all the Turkish variants are very well. I know that we have a player in the Discord that loves having them as Pashas uh, to carry a portal generator with Vanguard. And indeed it's a great combo uh, when you start to play Crown. But basically there are no bad variants uh, for me of the basic uh, Turkish uh, cruisers. 
And then for the Americans, you get two support sprues. Um, uh, sorry, not support, two aerial sprues. So you get two more John Aries, uh, two Acrons, which I love, more Acrons is always good, and two Cheyennes, which are also good little submarines. The one unit I'm very not much a fan of is the John Henry, which is probably one of the weakest uh, Colossus of the game, if not the weakest. Uh, it's extremely fragile, it cannot deep strike, uh, it can be fast uh, if it wants, but then it needs to go straight, and it's not that fast, it's 18 inches, and then it cannot shoot, it cannot board, it can do many things. Uh, if it gets very fast, it gets obscured, but then it cannot use its shield, that it gets right there in the chest. So it's a very cool unit, looking unit, but it's extremely expensive for a ship that will die extremely fast. And when I say extremely fast, you can be like, yeah, you can hide them, and yeah, you can hide them. Uh, but then, like, they will get killed uh, almost instantly by even, I don't know, e even an aircraft carrier or, or two. And then a unit that is cheaper than you, uh, destroyed you in one turn or maybe two. Uh, against the, an attack that you cannot even fight against and yeah, they are very expensive for what they do very fragile And I'm not a huge fan plus they, they have SDV zero as you will see in one of our battle, battle reports that will come a bit later uh, They have SDV zero so they are vulnerable to torpedoes and they have zero defense against because that's what they needed to be able to be killed very easily by torpedo. Anyway, they're very, like they're not many bad units in the game but the John Henry is one of them and uh, that's a bit sad and you get two of those here. Maybe they will get better at some point. Uh, but for now, they are really not that much worth it. Uh, this one has a bit derpy look. But really, you can give them, for example, two-handed hammer. And they can really, really look cool. Don't let yourself be fooled by the poses on those. Uh, the, these are really cool units. And if you play friendly games... <laughs> even in friendly games, they're terrible. <laughs> but they look really cool. Um, in this Beyond set, you will also get everything you need here, so some uh, dices, some critical dices, game dices, a little campaign that might be interesting, and uh, you will also get some uh, disorder tokens, activation tokens, and everything, plus the rules. So that is usually quite a good deal if you want to expand. Um, not sure I would highly recommend the John, like the, this box for a Union player. It's really not great. You do get some far point sentry, which is fine. For the Sultanate side, it's a better, for sure. Usually for the price, you quite like them. And it can be good if um, you are really beginning in Dystopian Wars and you buy the Fortune and Glory and you want a second set of all the dice and everything. You could buy them separately in the, like, um, Gibbets and Boxes uh, set. <laughs> I forgot the name. There is a box with only the rules and dice and set tokens. Uh, if you want to buy this, better to upgrade and get this. You will get great terrain. Uh, some good ships for the Union, Akron and Chains are good, and some good ship as well for the Turkish. Otherwise, I wouldn't say you really need to get this Beyond box. They are much better uh, boxes, either for the Sultanate, either for the Union to buy. Um, very soon, there will be our What to Build for the Fortune and Glory. First for the Crimson League, which is recorded already, and then I need to record the one for the Union as well. And uh, we'll, we'll give some tips on how to expand for each faction and much better choices than those. And now we get to the Order Colossus Squadron. And oh my god. Like, I did not anticipate this. I know some people say, like, yeah, we anticipated the angelic appearance. I absolutely did not. And I love this style. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Wow. Uh, we'll not even talk here about the design. Uh, I'm sorry, about the rules. We'll not talk here about the rules. Basically, this one is a melee one. Very shooty and incredibly efficient. For example, this is a Colossus that, unlike the John Henry, has unexpected arrival. So he will do something before he dies. And this guy, first of all, it's... Look at the pose like this, like kind of like praying or... Wow, incredible. And this guy is a little bit trickier to use, but if you use it well, damn, it can just be make a morale bomb in the middle of your enemy fleet and uh, you get two of those uh, incredible retrieval colossus uh, in the fluff those things are piloted by the soul of an alien angelic creature uh, from the order and uh, yeah I'm sorry I just cannot like that you if you play order and you don't play those like do you even play order like isn't this the reason you want to play order from the first place like 
wow, this is incredible. This is this is a Gundam. This is a Gundam. This should, should the Japanese should have something equivalent. But damn, look at this. It has specific rules. This guy, for example, on the left, to really say that it's very agile and can bounce from one ship to the other with its swords. And this is the most Gundam-y thing to do: to bounce from one ship to the other with your giant sword. And the the art direction, they really just outdid themselves. The mask here incredible this one i get what they were going with uh, the voice speaker here because uh, it's kind of like a psychic attack and with the voice okay but this guy is incredible uh, you get two of those uh, you can either build them both as a qualler either both of the chaska either one of each maybe buy them one of each if you want to have some variety and stuff but i know that i'm going to be a maker squadron of two chaskas make them drop together on my enemies uh i don't know their aircraft carriers or their own colossus and stuff and they're gonna look so cool doing that. Um, they are in the game. Let's talk one second about the rules. They, they are very expensive. They are very fast. They are very lethal, and they're gonna look very cool every time you bring them. I need to play them to see how efficient they are because they will have a huge target on their back as soon as they drop. But they, like the drone Henry, for example, of the Union, I want to love him, and there is just no way he does what he's supposed to do. These guys will do what they need to do. And I think just for this, they are, are worth a uh, place in your fleets. Uh, if you play pure order, of course, buy one or two of those boxes because that's going to be your main striking force to hunt little enemies left and right uh, with unexpected arrival. And even if you play Turkish or Egyptians or stuff, having one um, Retage Battle Fleet plus those order colossus as your uh, deep strike slash strategic reserve force is going to be amazing. Just from the rules, they were good. And for when you see the design, I'm like, yes, yes, please, I need more of those. And it's not over. You thought it was over, but it's not. There is still another box, and this one is interesting in the sense is the first time we have one box with a single ship inside. There is no other ship, no mass two, no mass one. I was thinking yes, but no. There is only the Maximilian class aerial linebreaker in the box, which is the name of the box, by the way, the Maximilian aerial linebreaker. So this guy looks like a Zeppelin. Um, it is from the Bavarians. I'm not sure it's Teutonic or not. Uh, pro I think it is Teutonic, I would guess. There is basically the Zeppelin with some resin upgrade parts. Uh, we can see that it has shield generators, which is <laughs> very good. Uh, the Zeppelins were fragile and this makes them much, much less fragile. It is the Zeppelin in the sense that it has this uh, rocket barrage right there. It also has this, I don't know if it's going to have any rules or if it's going to boost the storm generator or something. Uh, it has some resin acceleration thing, maybe to go faster, I don't know. And especially it has this kind of like giant Gustav Bombard, or is it the Big Bertha, this one? But it means that this guy will have a clear role, if this is indeed an artillery like the Gustav, because it is going to have this long range bombardment with all the heavy rocket batteries, plus the Gustav, and it can just stay at long range. And the enemy will have a very, very hard time getting close enough to bring him to closing range because it's aerial. And then you are going to be tough-ish with your aerial generator. You're probably still going to get a flag barrage to protect yourself against SRS, even though any extra defense against SRS is going to be welcome. And yeah, you're just going to be an amazing artillery piece. In the fluff, there is a little fluff text where they say that this is a line breaker in the sense that they see it charging at some de uh, defensive platforms. Uh, I would suggest, we'll need to see the rules, but I would suggest you not to charge with this thing because it's very, very much uh, an artillery slash sniper piece. And yeah, we can see another variance, which I would say it's the Gustav or the <laughs> or the Big Bertha. I always mix them up, but yeah, I think this is the Gustav actually. And the other one, the new one with only one rail is the Big Bertha because we used to have Augustus like this for a while. But yeah, come on. Giant flying Augustus with all the rockets on top and a shield. Pfft, what more do you want? What more do you want, Imperium players? <laughs> you are the spoiled kids of dystopian wars. Yeah, yeah, sure. Let, let's put shields on top of it, and uh, maybe it will also keep its atomic bomb, so it can uh, destroy any colossus that spawn in your back fleet as well. Sure, why not? And it's gonna cost 250 points. Oh, I'm kidding. But if this thing doesn't cost at least 400, <laughs> that's not gonna be right. Even at 400 points, if it gets all these weapons and stuff and it's keep the stat lines of the Zeppelin, it's going to be a very, very good ship to have in your fleet. And that's it for the boxes that uh, contain some ships. And now we go with something very, 
very interesting. I'm sorry, my nose is a bit full. It's been uh, it's winter here, and uh, I got sick a little bit. <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, the last thing we'll cover is the dystopian industrial set, and this thing is compatible with Legion Imperials. Good, okay. Uh, indeed, we can see that you can put your little uh, little space marines and little solar auxilia on top, but especially it is compatible with Armoid Clash. And this makes me think like I really want this thing because when Armoid Clash will be released at some point uh, this year, I think they yeah, they confirmed that it's going to be 2024. Uh, I really want to already have a table ready with all these beautiful terrains so we can start uh, recording battle reports and show us what we think of the game and how it plays, etc, etc. So painting like this, it looks amazing already, like wow. And the very, very interesting thing of this is not only that, okay, it looks very cool, you have the tank here, like you can see the scale with this uh, tank from Ar Armoid Clash. I will say, okay, a little teaser for those of you that stayed all the way there for, in the video. Uh, us uh, war hosts, uh, some of us, I've seen uh, teasers for the infantry of uh, Armoid Clash. And guys, you're not ready for this level of quality and detail. It looks so good. Like, I, I, will, I cannot spoil anything, but you're not ready. It looks amazing. It looks wow. Like the art design. The, the style, the quality, the level of details, it's insane. And you guys are just simply not ready for Armored Clash. If you're thinking like, oh, should I play Legion Imperialis or Armored Clash? Just wait until those teasers that we've seen of the infantry are officially released. And then you can make your choice. But please, like, wait. Because you've seen these terrible looking Space Marines. Wait until you see these, uh, these infantry uh, for Armored Clash. They look great. So you can see that those things, to talk back about the terrain, those things are quite small indeed it's three centi no three inches yeah three centimeters okay. three inches so about eight centimeters for us that count with the normal uh, measurements and uh, yeah it's uh, quite uh, quite small and um, but if you put some infantry on top of it it's gonna look i'm sorry i'm still thinking about the infantry it's gonna look amazing and uh, wow the interesting thing about those terrains uh, part that they are very small and have tons of details even though they are small and i hope they will show it at the end they, this is a drop keep for the Imperial Knights, and you cannot tell me otherwise. The interesting thing with this is, okay, they don't show the pictures, but they are sprues. And it means that you can really, really uh, customize them. And um, yeah, you can use them for the Traps and Commander, Flames of War, maybe a bit weird, Flames of War, so, but yeah. Uh, you can really customize it, and you don't have to make this exact fort, or you don't have to make this exact little building there. You really can build them however you want, and uh, wait for our unboxing video because this will be uh, important uh, I will not build them uh, directly but you will at least see in detail each little part and how they can combine with each other hopefully there will be some building instructions and um, yeah the, you can really make it however you want and as always we'll need to see the exact rules uh, about how line of sight is going to work in the end in an armored clash but we'll need to uh, think about do we want them to be like kind of like a line, like a bunker, um, to really break line of sight, like kind of like this, or do we want them very vertical like that? Um, that's going to be a question we will talk about during the unboxing video, and then maybe we'll make a what to build with this if there are some specific rules. I don't think so, but still, <laughs> tape measure not included. <laughs> Thanks for creating. And uh, yeah, we'll really do expect to see more of those soon, and for sure we'll try to make a whole table with only this uh, War Cradle Scenics terrain, because Armoid Clash deserves that. Okay, that is it for this very long review of all the new releases. I try to make you a little uh, teaser of how each of them are gonna play in my opinion, because it might be a while until we get the unboxings and especially the what to build, because I have quite a backlog of videos to publish. Uh, I'm like, uh, it's only me recording and editing, so it, it takes a little bit of time, but it's coming, it's coming, don't worry, we're not forgetting every, anything. And then um, look at the art style, like this picture for Beyond Fortune and Glory, it looks glorious indeed. And these Order Colossus, oh my god, who doesn't want to play that? Come on, look at this and tell me you don't want to play this if you play Order, come on. <laughs> uh, the funny thing is, like, you see ships in the picture, and usually they put what you have. Like for the Maximilian, you see it's a Zeppelin without his escort. Here you see ships. Does it mean that they don't announce it and you will actually have some, I don't know, order frigates? Uh, probably not. Let's not, <laughs> let, let's not be greedy. Yeah, very excited for this month of January. 
Uh, we were expecting expecting a slow month, like yeah, maybe we're gonna have one box for the crown, we'll see. And yeah, we got all of that. So very happy surprise. Uh, let us know in the comments uh, which ones you're interested in, which ones you plan on buying. If you like the video, remember to give us a thumbs up. It really helps us, us to see that you enjoy this type of content of analyzing the releases as soon as they are announced. Uh, as always, if you give us a comment, you gain a chance to win an entire Crown Battlefleet set or an entire Alliance Battlefleet set. Uh, it's, it's actually more than a Battlefleet set. It's like a huge armada for each faction. So really do try. And uh, yeah. Hope you enjoyed. Until the next video, remember to take care of yourself and also, of course, remember to keep spreading the love all around. Bye.